Karen demands VIP table claiming to know the owner, but I'm the owner, and she was left crying with a $4,000 bill after my revenge. Karen storms into the restaurant, screaming that she knows the owner and that we must give her and her group of pals the VIP table reserved for celebrities. The trouble is, I own the restaurant and have no idea who this lady is. But I decided to play along and see what happened. During the dinner, one of the girls asked me whether I thought my life was meaningless because I worked as a waiter. That's when I realized all bets were out, and I was going to exact my retribution. This is what I did. This occurred around Christmas and New Year's. My grandparents emigrated to Canada from Italy in the 1970s and established a restaurant. When they died, my parents took over the restaurant, which they grew and enlarged throughout the decades. I've been working at the restaurant since I was 15. As my parents became older, they retired and became snowbirds, spending the winters in Florida. They sold the restaurant to me a few years ago, but they kept a tiny percentage of the stock as a supplementary source of income in addition to their savings. As soon as I took possession, I modernized the old place. I rebuilt the restaurant, altered the logo, and contacted local and national newspapers to place advertisements. I invited food critics, bloggers, and vloggers. It was slow at first, and I began to fear that the loan I took out to undertake all of this was the worst mistake I'd ever made, that I had ruined three generations of a family company. But soon, it began to work. A local semi-famous YouTuber included us in one of his videos, which prompted more people to visit and review us. Even on a Monday, we were quickly seeing five to ten times the regular volume of activity. We became a destination for large events, and it was not uncommon for a celebrity to stop up on certain evenings. I even invited certain high-profile clients to visit and cook for our guests. This cost a fortune, so we were completely filled for the holidays. People had to make reservations in July to get a table in December. It took years to get to this point. When things become busy, I don't simply sit in the back office. I'm on the floor doing whatever needs to be done, whether it's greeting customers, bussing tables, or mopping the floors. On nights with high-profile guests or events, I wear a jacket and take charge. One night, six women walked in. Five of them appeared to be in their early 20s, with the leader looking to be in her mid-20s. My best assumption was that she was an elder sister of one of the females or an older sorority sister to incoming college students. I was greeting them at the entrance, and as they approached, Queen B. Karen was telling the baby Karens how fantastic this restaurant is, how delicious the cuisine is, and how there might even be celebrities there. When she approached me, she explained that she required a table for six. I responded, of course, can I get the name on the reservation? She stared at me. She responded, oh I didn't make one, but it's okay. The owner is a personal friend of mine. He said he always keeps one or two tables open for special guests and we can have one of those tonight. This is true for many high-profile restaurants, and I've been doing it recently as well. But I had no idea who this woman was, and she had never discussed any of this with me. I understood she was attempting to get in without a reservation, but she had chosen the worst person to try this with. I told her, I am sorry, but we cannot seat anyone without a reservation. As you can see, we do not have any seats available. I didn't want to go all out and say, I'm the owner, and we have never spoken before, so I never promised you anything. But I didn't want to embarrass her in front of the other girls she was with at the time. She then instructed one of the other girls to take a picture of me. She announced that she would speak with the owner and ensure that I was either scrubbing toilets or fired by the end of the week. The other girls behind her joined in, saying things like, yeah, kiss your minimum wage job goodbye. I wasn't sure if they were in on it with her or if they truly believed she knew the owner. Queen B. Karen then said, look, you can either give us a table or I can make your life very difficult. This is not worth losing your job. She kept pointing, trying to belittle me, and then saying things like, obviously you aren't anyone here. Because if you were, you would know who I am and never try to tell me anything other than yes or, of course. She was constantly attempting to put me down and take that table. At this time, it had been a hard day for me, and from my perspective, I had three options. Number one, I could inform her that I am the owner and call her out on all of this. Number two, I could simply hand her the table and let things go. Or, third, I could teach Queen B. Karen and her minions a lesson. I selected option three. I smiled at her and said, of course ma'am, please follow me. I handed her one of the three tables we leave free in case a celebrity walks in, which occurs occasionally. I told her, I apologize for everything and you're right, it would be simpler just to give you the table. I also assured her that the first three rounds of drinks would be free. I seated them down and personally served them. As they sat I told them, we need one of your credit cards and IDs just to keep on file, and we'll return them to you before you leave. Queen Karen handed me her card and informed the baby Karen minions, tonight is on me? I took their orders, gave them their free beverages, and informed them that due to how busy we were tonight, the meal may be delayed. The females only worried about the free drinks. They ordered three rounds and still hadn't received any food. They eventually called and asked me to check on it, all while giving me the worst attitude since they arrived. I told them I will look into it, but also asked if they wanted additional drinks. They ordered two more rounds. 
They were sloshed by the time the appetizers arrived, having done nothing but drink on an empty stomach for the majority of the night and just eating salads. As more food arrived, more beverages were ordered. What these girls didn't realize was that they were at our VIP table, which normally costs a few thousand dollars to sit at, but I didn't charge them for it. Except for the first three rounds, I charged them for all of the extremely costly cocktails they had throughout the evening. Furthermore, the table they were sitting at, as previously stated was VIP, thus the menus were different. Prices are not displayed on these menus. This is a restaurant industry trade secret. They also offered higher-end menu items such as white truffle, black caviar meals, and specially imported West Coast oysters, among others. At one point during the night, I honestly began to question what I was doing. I worried I was going too far with these poor girls, they might not know any better. But certain things encouraged me throughout the night, such as when one of the baby Karens questioned whether I thought my life was pointless because all I ever became was a server. Also, one of the other staff told me that they were planning how to mess with me, believing that they could do so whenever they wanted and that I would always give them a table. I overheard them say, he's cute, but I wouldn't date a waiter like that. He is such a pushover. There were other comments like that throughout the night, so I continued with their life lesson. By the end of the night, each female had built up a bill ranging from $500 to $600. I handed Queen Karen the bill for $4,232.23, which included tax and tip. I've never seen somebody sober up this soon. She went from smiling and giggling with her buddies to almost in tears. She immediately summoned me over and asked whether this was a joke. I took the bill, looked it over, and apologized. I'll get you the correct bill amount. Again, she seemed completely relieved, assuming she had received someone else's bill, and called me a effing idiot, before continuing to talk to her pals. When I returned to give her the right bill, she flipped out again. It was only a question. Is there something wrong on this bill that you didn't order? She and the girls were stunned and went over every single line of the bill, including the initial several lines that listed their original three rounds as complimentary. They then got out their phones and went over everything 100 times, adding it all up. Queen B, visibly startled, just remarked, One second? I need to use the restroom. Part of me feared she'd dine and dash and leave the baby Karens with the tab, but I discreetly reminded her that we had her ID and credit card, without making it too obvious. I was concerned that she would run out of money. Ten minutes later, she returns with new makeup, clearly crying, and tells me all about how poor the food was, how dreadful the drinks were, and so on, demanding that I at the very least cut the cost in half. She went on to say that the baby Karens would help, despite the fact that she had previously informed them that the night would be hers. Then as if a light bulb went off in her head, she brought up her alleged relationship with the owner again, as if it would give me extra motivation to lower the amount in half. I smiled as I told her, no, simply no, I can't change the bill. She takes out her phone and shows me a series of text messages from someone named after my restaurant, followed by the word owner. I instantly grasped what she had been doing in the bathroom, most likely changing one of the other Karen Minion's contact names and erasing prior text to establish this new script. I reviewed the messages and clicked on the contact information before telling her, that's not the owner's cell phone number. Her response was, he has multiple phones for business of course. You do not know all of his numbers. I replied, how about this, if we call him and he says it's okay to take 50% off the bill, then I'll do it. Her response was to begin ranting and screaming, which drew the attention of the few remaining patrons, and I knew it was time to finish this. I told her in a less conciliatory tone, cut the crap little girl. You do not know the owner. You've never been here before, and if you continue ranting, I'll call the cops. Her tone changed as she attempted to defend herself as best she could. My response to her lame retort was, My grandfather established this restaurant. My family has been running this establishment for centuries. I've worked here for nearly my entire life. I am the sole owner of this restaurant, and I have never seen you, heard of you, or made any promises to a stranger I have never seen before tonight. The little Karens were frozen and had no idea how to react. Queen Bee was in tears. I added, Now, I provided you the table you wanted, one of these particularly reserved tables for high-end clientele, which I did not charge you for, as well as three rounds of free drinks. If you do not pay your account, I will call the cops and give them your identification. Karen signed the bill in tears, and the tiny Karens reached into their wallets to hand her whatever cash they had, which was probably a couple hundred dollars, with a promise to repay her more. Two days later, an angry man arrives at my restaurant and requests that one of my bartenders talk with me. I was in the back office working, so he had to wait for about a half hour. She was with him too but she kept her head down. I took them both to my office and showed him highlights from the security cameras, which had particularly high quality audio because they were in the VIP area. We needed to keep good records in that region due to previous unconnected accidents. I showed him the majority of it, their remarks, orders, everything. When all was said and done, he rushed out with her, yelling at her the entire way. I have not seen or heard from any of them since, but the initial bill I gave them, which did not include the $120 oysters, is framed on my desk. As a side note, 
I did not lose as much money on the table in three rounds of drinks as you might expect. The table was intended to be empty anyway, so I didn't lose anything because I hadn't expected to gain anything in the first place. The cost of the meal and other drinks more than compensated for the loss in the first three rounds. So now that you know everything, am I the jerk? Probably the most astonishing thing about the Karens in this situation, aside from the money, trying to muscle their way into securing a seat and avoiding paying the bill, was their perspective on the world. That solitary statement concerning the OP's, original posters, inadequacy as a waiter definitely stood out. It seems that OP was going to loosen up on his entire vengeance plan, but then one of the baby Karens asked him if he felt his life was meaningless because all he had become was a waitress. That has to be one of the most insanely entitled viewpoints we've ever seen on this channel. It may not be as exciting or insane as some of the other stories, but the fact that she actually sees the world in this way is simply sick. There is absolutely nothing wrong with having a job, regardless of the income. This occurs frequently with jobs such as janitors, and I despise it when individuals believe they are superior just because they do not work in those positions. There is nothing wrong with becoming a janitor. I don't understand that mindset, but in this situation, she not only feels that way, but she also wants to mock him for doing a difficult job, such as being a waiter. Or at least that's what she believes he's doing. One more thing. I'm happy this story ended on a somewhat gratifying note, with the father attempting to reverse the situation but becoming more enraged with his daughter than the restaurant owner. The only thing that scared me out was that the restaurant was recording audio of the folks sitting at that table. I would probably avoid going to a restaurant if I knew my talks were being recorded. Anyway, I'm glad it worked out for the OP but please tell me how you would have handled the matter if it were your restaurant and these were your customers. Was the OP a jerk or not, and why? Thank you for watching, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.